Welcome aboard. We're going to get started here. I'm um, just doing a little bit of pre-flighting here. Tonight's flight, I'm going to fly uh, San Diego Lindbergh International up to uh, Lima 35, a, a Big Bear City airport up in the mountains east of uh, Los Angeles, out east of the Inland Empire. That's uh, a nice high field, Mountain doing a little mountain flying tonight. Um, just kind of getting things set up here. This is an interesting one because the uh, there is no tech route for this uh, for this route because nobody flies to Big Bear City that much. Um, so we're going to experiment a little bit here. What I've planned up, and I have no idea if we're going to be able to get this or not, is a fairly simple route: uh, San Diego direct to Palm Springs, um, and then up Victor 386 to Okiko and then across to Big Bear City. I chose this as kind of the last waypoint based on the sole instrument approach into Big Bear and RNAV GPS approach. Uh, one of the initial fixes is Okiko, so if we end up having to go in on an instrument approach, we will be hopefully reasonably well positioned to do so. So, hopefully you guys enjoy the flight. We're going to be calling for clearance here in a little bit. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a completely different route or rerouting. Um, so I haven't done the GPS prep or anything else like that yet, but I'm going to do so shortly. So let's see here. go get San Diego. Lindbergh clearance is going to be on 125.9, which I've got in the standby here. Listening, listening. Not hearing anything, which always makes me a little bit nervous because the controllers are usually busy, but it's not a hugely busy night on the network, so maybe things are just quiet. Let's find out. Limber Delivery, good evening. Caravan 526 Victor looking for clearance up to Big Bear City. Bear 526 Victor, the clearance cleared to Big Bear Airport after departure, fly heading 310. Radar vectors, uh, Palm Springs. Swan has filed. Maintain 2000. Expect 1 1000 in 5 minutes. Departure frequency 1 100.6. Squawk 3520. 3520. Okay, great. Awesome, we got our route. Okay, 526 Victor, we're cleared. Uh, departure heading 310. Radar vectors Palm Springs and has filed. Initial climb to 2000. Departure frequency 1 100.6 and 3520 in the squawk for Caravan 526 Victor. Caravan 26 Victor, read back, correct. All right, well, this is going to be kind of an easy one then. Let's go ahead and get that route dialed in. I suppose I could have done the uh, first waypoint since that wasn't going to change. I'm mildly surprised we were able to get direct Palm Springs, but I think there's just not a whole lot going on. In that neck I'll start calling just uh, your call sign only. So that's okay. Argentina 2201, John Wayne Clarence, Roger, say request. Hey, Osh, how you doing? Alright. Argentina 2201, so. Roger, John Wayne Clarence. Airport, after departure, fly heading 175, radar vector Seal Beach, direct. Maintain 4,000. Departure frequency 127.2. Squawk 6437. Co. Almost. Almost. Okay. Okay. Yep. Almost done. Lima. I wonder if these have a K in front of them. Guess we'll find out. Yep, they sure do. Okay. Argentina 2201, read back, correct. Hmm. 
makes me a little nervous that the field's not going to be in the GPS, especially since now that I think about it, I'm remembering something about a patch note that indicated that might be the case. Okay, sweet. Nope, there it is. Alright, all the distances make sense. Hey, Sai890, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. There's the rough route in there. Nothing too fancy. And for those of you who are just uh, coming online, here's what the route's going to look like tonight. No, in the GPS for uh, X-Plane does not actually support um, keyboard entry. They haven't found a good way. The, the guy who developed it is not really a fan of capturing the keyboard um, input. He's found it to be annoying because he, you're, you think you're typing in the GPS and then suddenly you're not and your plane's doing crazy stuff. So it kind of sucks, but, you know, honestly, using the mouse wheel, which is what I use to do it, it's not too bad. So it's not too bad. And for those of you who are just, uh, just tuning in, um, you can always feel free to ask questions. I love chatting. The reason I do this is because I like talking while I'm flying, so don't, uh, don't hesitate to say hello or ask questions if you have them along the way. I've found that talking about what I'm doing as I'm doing it helps me make sure I know what I'm doing, so you're not gonna, you're not gonna bother me. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to hit the waypoint name and hit the ejection seat by mistake. That's no bueno. Weather tonight, San Diego altimeter is 3018. Pulled up uh, Palm Springs weather just since we'll be flying directly over the top. Looks like a beautiful night to fly. A uh, few clouds, 25,000 at San Diego. Clear skies at both Palm Springs and Big Bear. No wind. Uh, should be pretty straightforward, hopefully. I'll have to keep an eye on that altimeter, though. That's one thing. Alright, let's get this dialed in for 2000. That's our initial climb out. Vertical speed to 2000. We know we have an initial departure heading of 310. Cell 575 is clear to maintain 13000, Las Vegas altimeter 3027. Well, Osh, one uh, obvious suggestion presents itself don't always be intoxicated. Seems straightforward to me, but what do I know? <laughs> Alright, so let's pick up the ground control here. Lindbergh. You can see up here it's 123.9, so we'll get that dialed in. Commuter ramp area on our chart. You can see we're just right over in this area. Expecting a 2-7 departure tonight, as usual, so we'll probably get taxi 2-7 via Bravo. But let's go find out. Hello, control tower directly in front of us. Hello, fuel truck crossing right to left and hopefully stopping or vanishing. Nope! It's just gonna keep on coming. Hey, buddy! Have a good day! <laughs> Alright. Get our taxi plane. Taxi call, I mean. Limburg Ground, Caravan 526 Victor at the commuter ramp with the weather. Taxi for departure IFR. 526 Victor, Lebanon 27, taxi via Bravo. Shocking development. 27 via Bravo for 26 Victor. This is the caravan again, the Caronado 208. Um, this will probably be... I'll probably do a couple more flights with this thing and then switch off to some of the other planes. I've also got the uh, F-33 Bonanza from Carinado and the uh, Piper Saratoga, which I'm pretty stoked about. That looks like a fun little high-performance retractable single. 
RJ2201 tower on my 20 right, cleared for takeoff. Penfold, the fuel truck I think is from the uh, X plane scenery I have right. installed. I don't have any ground traffic um, add ons. It's probably, I think it's. I think X plane is smart enough to do Skyhawk 7478X some Roger, level of ground traffic. If you, uh, 2, until advised. if you give it some help on the scenery as to where things should be, it will render Squawk zero ground zero uh, vehicles for you. But I could be wrong. Someone else might know. Thanks, Osh. Have a good flight. You back. Well. All right, so we got our flaps to departure. Get the uh, floats turned on a little bit. Whoa, too much. Turn those down a little bit. Do do do. Thanks for the follow, Osh. Appreciate it. So just to review on departure, we're going to be heading... Uh, we're going to look, be looking for heading 310 and then a direct to Palm Springs. Palm Springs is over 80 miles from where we are right now, so I doubt we'll be able to pick it up on our nav radio until we get a little bit higher, so I'll probably go GPS um, to that just so we don't have to mess with it. Uh, the, the altitude I filed for, for the cruise is 11,000, um, which is pretty near the ceiling of where you want to take this thing since it is unpressurized. The caravan is not capable of going up uh, above altitudes where you need oxygen unless you have oxygen for everyone on board. Um, but Big Bear being up in the mountains, and we got to get over the mountains that are south of Palm Springs to get up there. Wanted to make sure we were nice and high, and I believe we should have any issues. Uh, contact SoCal departure. But I guess we'll find out, won't we? All right, coming up on the hold short here. Number two seven. Or nine four seven eight echo. John Wayne to two zero right taxi. We have Bravo Kilo. Okay, a couple little things before we take it up into the air. Argentina 2201, so go to departure, rate of contact, maintain 4000. Tower frequency, which is 118.3. We were told departure frequency 119.6. Get that in the standby, so we're ready to switch right over to it. Uh, squawk code of 3520. Oops. For 5520, Papa, class 5 or space to the north, you can begin VFR descending at your discretion. Turn and the Van Nuys altimeter is 3019, contact SoCal approach 134.2. Heading mode on. Turn the AP master off for now. Oops. Hmm. RGC at 2201, okay. turn right, there heading 340, vectors, final approach course. Check out trim. Yeah, there's a lot of places to get uh, diagrams. I, I like the AOPA.org site. I've got a little Chrome bookmark set up so I can just type in a airport code. So, for example, in my Chrome address bar, if I type in AP, I get an automatic search bar and I can type in KPSP, and it takes me straight to the uh, AOPA page for that. Charts are then down here in the corner. So so there's so lots of places California to get them, including paper charts. Discretion, I used to have so a uh, four-flight subscription. Uh, three I'll let it lapse, but I'll probably renew that and start using that again, although it's a little bit harder to show off what I'm doing. So, All right, let's see. What else do we need to do? Got our altimeter. Got our heading for the departure. Transponder's on. Autopilot's prepped. Flaps are at uh, 10. Trim is set to take off. That's this little gizmo right here. That way we don't try to fly the plane off the runway and stall. Not that that would ever happen to me, of course. <clears throat> Limber Tower, Caravan 526 Victor, short of 27, ready to go, IFR. Number 526 Victor, Limber Guard, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 27, 526 Victor. Lego.
Number 5520, Papa, Radar Services uh, terminated. You can run on your present beacon code, contact Bounty Tower 100.3. Yeah, AOPA is the uh, Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. I believe they only have U.S. airports in their database. Uh, if you're looking for other countries, there's all sorts of different diverse uh, sources for charts. There's no one great unified source unless you feel like paying for a Jemison subscription, which I do not. 552 Sierra Pop, Van Ice Tower, Roger, proceed uh, straight in, runway 34 left, cleared to land. Gotta love a plane that can take off wind, before uh, the uh, displaced threshold runs out. <laughs> this caravan is a short field performer for sure. Argentina 220, turn right, heading 010. Turn that right turn over to uh, heading 310. And begin our climb on up to. Oops. 26 Victor, contact local departure. Over to departure for 26 Victor, thank you. The heading bug got messed up here, so we're going to level off for just a sec while I fix that. Or our uh, altimeter bug, I should say. There we go. Alright, over to departure. So, got departure, Caravan 526 Victor, uh, climbing through 500 for 2000. Number 526 Victor, got departure, radar contact, maintain 6... 6,000. Up to 6,000 for 526 Victor. No, this is not a, actually an FSC economy flight uh, this time. There is not very much in the way of traffic up to uh, Big Bear, being a small airport, but I thought it'd be a little more interesting to stream than some of the stuff I've been doing lately. So we'll do it again soon, but not, not this time. All right, so we should be expecting a turn direct to Palm Springs here pretty soon. No, Argentina 2201 is going to maintain 3,000. Exactly how long it's going to take us to get out of the zone here. There's the airport we just departed. Shouldn't it be called Small Bear? I suppose. It is kind of a small airport. The bears are big, though. I can vouch for that myself. That is definitely true. Normally when I check in with... Or 26, leaving 2000, turn right, heading 330, radar vectors, uh, Palm Springs, climb and maintain 11,000. Up to 11,000 and climbing through 2000, we will turn right to 330, direct Palm Springs, 526 Victor. There's the turn I was waiting for, he just wants us to get up through 2000. There's a lot of airports right next to each other, right around Limburg, so the flows of traffic can be kind of interesting, for sure. Just about to pass 2,000 here. Waiting, waiting, waiting. I like this plane, but it is not a high performer when it comes to the climb, that is for sure. Three, three, zero. Our heading bug. For 26 Victor, flighting 340, expect direct to uh, Palm Springs in about 12 or 13 miles. Okay, 340 for now, and we'll expect uh, direct Palm Springs soon. Thanks. 56 Victor. So we'll just chill out on 340 for now. Not surprising we have to fly a Vector for just Our a little bit. 220, turn right, heading considering zero. How far zero. Away, uh, considering how far away Palm Springs is from where we are right now. Not be able to go straight there. So 575 at Las Vegas approach 125.02. But in the meantime, we'll continue climbing, clean up the airplane, get our lights off, all that good stuff. Our taxi landing lights, that is. So 575 Las Vegas Roger, expect visual approach runway 25 left. Best jet for a starter? Um, that's a good question. If you, you, seven four, four seven eight echo joint tower and wait if you want right, something simple, I would question whether you should be flying a jet at all, honestly. Um, what sim are you using? FW190? Are you using X plane or FSX? Rotis your pop roger taxi to the ramp alpha remains frequency. Sorry, 
Excel 575 to Clower, heading 040, vectors visual approach. After Clower, descend and maintain 11000. Argentina 2201, 4 miles from Lemon, turn right heading 220, um, established, clear to ILS from You know the right default approach. planes are not terrible. The flight models aren't great, but yeah, I mean if you if you I would I would progress through airmanship and being able to fly a pattern in a, a 172 or something along that ilk before you start worrying about jets. Um, I haven't flown FSX in about four or five years, so I'm not real familiar with what the current state of affairs is. Number two six Victor, fly heading zero two zero one able code direct Palm Springs VOR resume my navigation. Zero two zero direct Palm Springs resume on nav, thanks. Five two six Victor. Alright, let's do it. Direct to Palm Springs right now. Switch our pilot to nav mode. Make the turn. Yeah, so as, as I was saying, I would work on getting your pattern skills down, your airmanship, being able to work on, you know, being able to talk while you're flying and handle ATC, um, and then start worrying about jets. Um, if you get behind the airplane, one, 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 which will Tower, happen Roger, a lot enter, as a newbie, um, left downland, runway three, you'll four, be in trouble a lot faster three, zero, one, in a jet, whereas in a, a Cessna or something else like that, you can have a little more time to get things under control. Um, I like flying contact Tower, slower one, two, six, props plane. for that reason. It also gives the flights a little bit longer. You're not just climbing and descending the entire time. There's actually some cruise phase and some planning as well. I would definitely not rush into it though, because if you do, you're going to get frustrated and uh, feel like you're, twenty two zero one Tower, one you're going to feel right, like you're line. failing at doing things that you should feel like you should be able to do when it's not reasonable. We're seven eight echo that. radar contact. So, say altitude. What two cents? We're seven and a Rogers Squawk uh, zero five, and then contact departure. Checking in on our map here. We are just out of San Diego, and we're now pointed directly to Palm Springs. We'll fly a couple more waypoints. You got seven four. Head nearly due seven, west. Eight, Airport's eight, right here, right next to Lake uh, the lake here. Should be a nice, pretty approach with the lake in the background. Right. And, uh, should be a lot of fun. So, the reason I fly X plane over FSX? There's two reasons. Um, first and foremost, when we were first starting working on Pilot Edge, we decided to start with just the uh, X-Plane client, so for a, a long time, four, seven, eight, eight, eight. maybe so kind of part, Roger, resume, oh, navigation, four or five then, months of the beta of Pilot five. Edge, we only had an X-Plane client, so I kind of was forced to switch, and then once I did, I found out very quickly X -Plane, X -Plane, what a lot of people direction. have been saying for a long time, the flight modeling is a lot superior, um, the graphics at the time were not great, they certainly caught up well in X-Plane 10, and now that with things where they are, I'm a lot happier being so on five, a sim seven, five percent of that's seven, still ten. actively developed and has a active developer behind it that's pushing patches. I know Prepared kind of has that, um, but the licensing thing makes me a little bit nervous. I don't really understand how that works or want to deal with it. So I like X-Plane. It works for me. It's a great training tool. The, the flight modeling is superb, and they just the planes just feel a lot better. Uh, to answer your question, Penfold, this is not real time. It is the evening in Pacific time, so this should be a night flight if we were doing real time. It is real weather, and the only reason it's not uh, real time is because I thought this flight would be kind of boring if we couldn't see the nice pretty mountains and approach and lake and all that stuff. So I'll be doing another night flight soon. I think my next flight um, that I'm going to do after this one, which I might do tonight but probably won't be able to chain it together, will be a night flight from San Diego up into the, the LA area, which will be a nice chance to show off the X-Plane night lighting engine and all that all that jazz, which is pretty nice. I've, I have... Uh, I respect people who fly real time all the time. I work all day and spend the early evenings with my kids and with my wife, so usually I'm not booting up the sim till about 7.30 and fly till about 9.30, so if I didn't do this, I would fly in the dark all the time. Just fine, I guess, but this is a nice little variety. Check out our outside view here. up over uh, Escondido here is this little city up here I think and 
and or maybe Temecula, I'm not sure. XL575 trying to maintain 5,000. Alright. Got another 65 miles or so to Palm Springs. Um, I am Pilot Edge's uh, CTO, Chief Technical Officer, Technology Officer. I have built the, uh, the website, a lot of the back-end services that run the billing system, and generally help Keith with some of the some of the technical stuff. Keith's also a programmer and developer. He wrote the server and the clients uh, before I came on board, so he doesn't need my help with some of that stuff. But I basically help out with a lot of the kind of back office stuff. I'm not not notice notably I'm not a controller. I tried controlling on P Pilot Edge once. Uh, because I thought I could handle it. Three, four, Bravo whiskey That's a controller for a long time. I've been a that's instructor for a long time, so I room, theoretically yeah. knew how to teach people how to be controllers, which means you should have a decent idea of what you're doing. And the uh, the precision and amount of airspace covered by our Pilot Edge guys is pretty intense, and I could not handle it. <laughs> and I have no problem admitting it. RC twenty two zero one. Architect Murphy of Bravo. Remain this frequency. Our guys know what they're doing. They are very, very good at what they do. A lot of respect for it. Check our ground speed here. Oops. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't really know what I'm doing in this GPS still. Ground speed 140, okay. All right, so we got about 26 minutes and falling rapidly. That's interesting. Uh, some of them are real controllers, some of them are retired controllers, some of them are um, college students who are studying to get their uh, their degrees one, in one, four, aviation. Lima whiskey. I'm sorry, one Lima Whiskey, runway 34 left, the line. So they are, they are very real in that they get paid to do this and uh, are so five, seven, scheduled five, shifts just like controllers, yeah, they follow a pretty side. intense procedural guide, just like controllers. They're evaluated and reviewed by our um, operations and quality so assurance five, team, five, just like real controllers, quote unquote. Um, and like I said, some of them have experience working real traffic up in the sky. Checking our sectional here. That mountain ridge that we were just seeing out in front, I believe, is this ridge here at about 6,000. And then coming into Palm Springs, there'll be another set of ridges, another set of mountains at about 7,200, 7,500. And then this one up here makes me a little bit nervous because it's at 10,800 and we're cruising at 11,000. So I'll keep an eye on that one for sure. So you, the more observant among you may have noticed our controller uh, our controller voice changed. That's pretty normal for a shift change, both on uh, Pilot Edge in, and the real world. Um, there's no announcement. You just are talking to one person, and then the next minute you call them up and somebody else answers. They handle all the handoff of all the information of what's happening in their airspace behind the scenes and just drop in seamlessly. It's 
Scout 7478 Exo, Cup Approach, Ontario, Altimeter 301. Uh, 384 Bravo, Whiskey Van Eyes, Tower Hold Shore Traffic is uh, he's on a, about a two mile base. I'm sorry, about a one mile base at Bravo Star Finally. So just about to level off here. That's good. There it is. 11,000 coming up, which is good because we're running out of gas to <laughs> we're running out of juice to be able to climb. So you can tell this airplane is kind of calibrated to fly low and slow. And by pushing it up to 11,000, we are we're not at the, we're not at the limits or anything like that, but we're definitely running high for this plane. Pull our prop back a little bit as we're leveling. So, Pilot 75, kind of biggest tower, 100.9er. See ya. Okay, up at cruise altitude. Check our map. 150 miles or so to Palm Springs. After Palm Springs, just for a uh, refresher here. So, Palm Springs is right here. We're down about this area. So, Pilot 75, Las Vegas, 12007, runway 25, left code line. Um, Palm Springs up to Okoko. Then we'll go due west, direct, probably direct to the airport. If needed, we're prepped, reasonably prepped, to fly the uh, GPS arrival into Big Bear City, which starts from that same point that we turned due west at. It's a very simple uh, step-down GPS approach into the airport. The airport is at 6,700 feet. Um, it's a 6,000-foot runway and uh, just a couple descent points. If we cannot land at Big Bear for some reason because of weather, uh, I've declared uh, San Bernardino International to be our alternate, so I should go ahead and get that pulled up as well. So we have the charts standing by. And that has an ILS approach, which we would surely use. Generally speaking, ILS is going to have the lowest uh, minimum descent altitude, so if you're diverting due to bad weather, you're going to want an ILS. Yeah, generally speaking, uh, Traffic traffic and congestion is not a big component of airline fees. Um, fuel is the biggest motivator, um, as well as taxes. Of course, most of that gets passed along directly to you. And yeah, like uh, Penfold said, uh, employee costs, staffing of the pilots, the ground handlers, the maintenance, uh, the mechanics that do the inspections, the flight attendants, everyone that's involved in the flight. Uh, 384, Bravo Whiskey, runway 34 left, line up and wait. I would expect we'll probably get a frequency change here before too long. Scott, one in the whisk, actually parking via Alpha. I mentioned this on the other night when we were streaming, but uh, Pilot Edge models uh, transmitter distance for the various frequencies. So that's now four. So we know where each uh, SoCal sector's four, transmitter is located, and we will we will lose contact with this frequency, the, the controller that's working this frequency, if we keep flying long enough and don't change. So uh, that will get that will get changed. In some Yeah, the idea, that's the, you, you're, you're stepping, when you talk about the paying the controllers and paying for the radar and all the real world um, ATC costs, you're stepping into the user fees debate, which is whether uh, pilots should have to pay the FAA um, a fee for the flight, and uh, that fee would vary depending on how far they go and whether they fly into a busy airport or not. Um, landing fees soar to capture that, but those don't generally go to the federal government, is my understanding. But yeah, we're not. I'm not going to get into user fees. That's a whole big political debate in the U.S. with lots of people yelling and just screaming about it. If you are bored, you can Google user fees. But I'll be honest, I don't really know a ton about it because I'm not a real-world pilot right now. So let's just say it's yet another reason to stick to the Sims, where you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. So five seventy-five cross runway two five right at six. Taxi parking via Bravo Charlie five. Uh, Charlie, monitor ground on one. So, 
so five, seven done. What I meant to say is Bravo six strong. Zoom out here a little bit on the map. Since we are in the middle of nowhere. What was a calm thought? Gox 78 Echo, contact Riverside Tower 121.0. Such a sub force seven eight echo. First uh tower After enter that, uh left down one runway two turn seven three heading uh three two nine approximately to north kinda north northwest to Okuko, which will be a short leg. Just about twenty four miles, and then about fourteen miles west to the airport. So we'll probably start descending somewhere around that western. And again, visibility uh, uh and weather of a big bear is fantastic. Seven mile by visibility, clear skies, and no wind. A little cold, minus three Celsius. Not sure the conversion off the top of my head. Probably should know that. Mm, no, I sure don't. Maybe someone can convert it and tell me what it is. Whether we should should have packed our uh, packed our jackets or not. Sounds cold, right? Minus three. Yeah, don't overfly conservation areas. Good question. Can I explain how a turbine is controlled and monitored differently than a piston? Uh, that's an excellent question that I really don't have enough uh, technical knowledge of how these things work to be able to answer. If someone on the chat knows the uh, the difference, that would be good. I've noticed. I know from a pilot's perspective, the the uh, turboprop is going to be less responsive in uh, time. There's an input lag in the engine. There's also issues where if you go from fully the, the throttle being fully open to the fully closed, you can damage the engine and have to do a, at least do a restart, if not be more damaged than that. Um, the gauges are also quite a bit different. You get you measure based on uh, temperature, um, the internal temperature of the turbine, and then you have your usual prop RPM as well. And this is a uh, torque meter, foot-pounds of torque, and this is kind of the main one that I keep an eye on to make sure that we're not going too fast. Keep this one on, eye on this one to make sure we're not uh, overheating. I don't remember if the 210 is a Talk seven, eight, echo, right, constant five. speed prop. Does it have a blue uh, propeller Caravan handle? Two six Victor, contact SoCal approach, 126.7. 26.7 for 526 Victor. Here's our frequency change we're waiting for. So Cal Caravan 526 Victor 11000. Caravan 526 Victor, so Cal Approach Palm Springs, Altimeter 3024. Uh, altimeter 3024 for 526 Victor. We gotta make sure and dial that in because it is gonna change quite a bit. And we want to be sensitive to the altitude since we're gonna be flying over some uh, mountains. Okay, yeah, if you're already used to a constant speed prop, I don't think the turbine transition will be that bad. Also, the 208 um, of all of the turboprops is uh, pretty easy to fly. Um, it's very docile in the air. It's not particularly fast. It's fixed gear. Um, it has a very low approach and stall speed, so you, you do your approach at a very low speed, which is, makes it easier to fly because you have more time to set yourself up and you're not trying to fly a super fast approach. So I would say... Um, you're probably not going to run into too many issues if you're if you're able to fl if fly the 210 around pretty well. You're not going to have too many issues with the 208. Uh, another turboprop that I like that I really want to find a good model for X-plane is the Pilatus PC12, which is another uh, single turboprop that is retractable gear and seats about seven or eight instead of eleven like the Caravan. But it, it I believe is pressurized, so we can climb 
uh, much higher. It's often used in a medevac uh, hospital flying flying medical plane and that sort of thing. Yeah, the uh, Carinado Caravan is a delight, honestly. It's great to fly. It's got a really nice modeled uh, cabin that you can play with. The panel is really nice and works very basic. Um, basic but easy to fly. Um, the default GPS obviously is the main thing that I use when I'm navigating, but it does have the nav two nav receivers, has a DME, it has a radar altimeter that I don't use a ton. And, uh, you know, X-Plane gets a lot, a lot of knocks for not having nice exterior models. One thing Carinado always nails is the external models look great. I bought this plane back when it was uh, released for X-Plane 9, and Carinado's updated it twice since then, including a complete redo for X-Plane 10, and I've gotten both of those upgrades for free, so can't complain about that. I mean, you could, but you should The other reason I really like the caravan, like I was saying the other night, uh, when you're flying on FS Economy or someplace like on uh, a site that kind of tracks the economics of the flying you're doing, this plane is very cheap to operate and holds a lot of people. So it's good. It's a good money maker in the real world, and it's a good money maker on FS Economy as well versus some of the other uh, turbines, which can be a little harder to make your make your profit on flights. So let's see, we should be coming up on Palm Springs, about 27 miles. Check in on our live map here. Just about to go over those mountains. We'll drop into Palm Springs Cathedral City, and then begin that turn up. Up into the San Bernardino National Forest, and land right on the airport, which is on the right on the east end of the lake. Uh, FS Economy doesn't have anything to do with uh, skydiving loads. I've certainly seen people sim simulating um, skydiving missions before, where you fly uh, essentially a climbing hold up to a certain altitude, and then you'll fly over a zone and drop, and then descend back down again. Those u skydiving missions are usually flown VFR, because nobody goes skydiving when it's cloudy, because they would kill themselves or freeze to death. So. Uh, it's not the most interesting flying in my mind because a real-life skydiving pilot will just fly from the airport up to altitude in a circle, drop everyone down in a circle, land. Pick up another load up in a circle, altitude, drop everyone down in a circle, land. So, not personally something that I'm dying to simulate, but I hey, if it's your thing, go for it. Alpha, and yeah, the caravan is a very, a very common plane in the real world for high skydivers because it's big, holds a lot of people, it's slow, so you can open the door on the side and let people out without causing a big problem. Yeah, no big deal. Alright. Yeah, exactly. Like an elevator. This is that peak that I was showing you on the sectional earlier that's right at 10,700. So we still have about 300 vertical feet according to the chart and according to the altimeter, but we'll definitely want to make sure we don't accidentally turn left and smack it. Because that would be embarrassing. Yeah, I can imagine they get a little crazy with the descents and pattern work when Caravan you're skydiving. 26 Victor, landing 060 to maintain 7000. Palm Springs Airport, 12 o'clock, 16 miles reports. Uh, Caravan 526 Victor, we're actually going to Big Bear City, not Palm Springs. Caravan uh, 26 Victor, yeah, I just thought about that and slapped myself, so sorry. No problem, you want us uh, same altitude and course? Yes, uh, disregard it, I said. No problem, 526 Victor. 
Um, yeah, I could see skydiving flying in the world could be exciting. Those guys probably get paid by the load of uh, skydivers, and nobody wants to go wait around on the ground for the pilot to come back, so they're probably highly incentivized to climb and descend very quickly. <laughs> probably more quickly than the manufacturers of their airplane would prefer that they do. I've never been skydiving. i got a friend who's really into it. Uh, can't say it's probably ever going to be my thing, but I uh, will defend the right of, of others to do so in a free and open society. Something over, he's still on the ground. Scott, say something over, uh, departure frequency is this frequency. Give me a call, everyone. Bad Mage says, I enjoy flying airplanes, not jumping out of perfectly good ones. I would tend to agree with you, sir. I would tend to agree. Cox under San Luis, Altimeter 3024. So, to fly this, it looks like we're not going to need that GPS uh, approach because the weather is holding out to be clear as could be. Uh, departing Okoko will be flying due west to the airport. I would imagine ATC, which will probably be Los Angeles Center by that point, not SoCal, because we're not in SoCal anymore, um, probably be pointing us out to the uh, airport. We can then help him out a ton by canceling IFR as soon as we have the field in sight and flying in VFR the rest of the way. Um, the reason for that is, if we were to go in all the way IFR in an instrument approach, um, any any non-precision approach, that's not I, which is uh, something that's not an ILS, has a one-in, one-out rule on it, uh, so they can't have more than one pilot on that approach at a time, so it kind of gums up the works, and if anyone else was going to try and come along and fly the approach, they'd have to wait and fly a holding pattern until we checked in, either on the ground or in the missed approach, so you can help out your controllers a lot. If you have a field in sight in your IFR, and it's an uncontrolled field especially, uh, just cancel IFR and fly the rest in VFR. So that's the plan, uh, assuming the weather holds. 12 miles to the Palm Springs VOR here. But look, hey look, Palm Springs. Hey look, Palm Springs Airport. Yeehaw. Scott 434, Echo you're on the uh, John Wayne ground. Do I want the approach, the practice of the uh, GPS approach? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. You could, uh, you could convince me. I don't know, you guys weigh in on the chat. You want to see the uh, GPS approach? Can't promise I'll fly it perfectly, but I'll, I'm willing to give it a go if uh, people are interested in seeing it. Penfold says do it. Any other votes? I'm certainly not opposed. Sellout says take the pattern work. FW190 says GPS approach is good. Yeah, what the hell, we'll do the GPS approach. Sounds good to me. Let's get that programmed in. Um, see if it has it. It does have it. Alright, perfect. So we're going to expect to transition that port yourself no ride. Yeah. from Okoko. Load that into our flight plan here. Alright, so we've got an extra... Scott 6 Alpha number radar contact. Extra uh, field here. This needs to go away because that's the airport. There we go. I will be... Uh, 
interested to see how this goes because I'm going to try and fly this using the X plane built in GPS. Uh, which I have really never used before to fly a GPS approach. Uh, we're completely dependent on the GPS having been programmed properly and the approach having been programmed into the GPS properly. But if all else fails, we can go to the missed approach and. So I'll call SoCal right after we pass Palm Springs and let him know that's our approach request. Since he's probably not going to be expecting that, given the weather is as nice as could be. Okay, thank you. Four miles till our turn here. You can see we've activated the GPS approach here. It's got a hold inbound if necessary. Um, and then the turn, the, the, the legs westbound. Here's another look at the chart. Um, hopefully you can read that. I'll make it a little bit bigger here. Okoko, which we have already planted to. And from there, we can depend descend to 9,400 to Bunja. <laughs> then after Bunja, we'll descend to 8,700. Um, and then after Bunja, ah, after to Halvi. And then from Halvi to Zusuk, Zusuk, something like that. Um, we can descend down to 8,140. Do have to keep an eye on all these little dots here with numbers next to them. Those are mountains. We don't want to hit those. Uh, four, three, four, five, John, like, ground, two, zero, left, <coughs> we also yeah, need to keep an eye on the Charlie. missed approach here. Just climb to 8,800 um, immediately and make a climbing right turn to 11,000 direct Bridget and we'll hold, we would hold there for further instructions. Alright, there's our turn after Palm Springs. Let's go ahead and call SoCal. And SoCal Caravan 526 Victor with a request. Number 706 Alpha Zulu, San Luis Tower, loud and clear. Hmm. Other aircraft on site. Uh, it's SoCal Caravan 526 Victor. We'd like to fly the uh, GPS runway 26 to Big Bear from uh, Okoko. Caravan 526, uh, Victor, roger, stand up. Okay, stand by. Uh, ZABCL, hey there. I do not uh, fly any VATSIM anymore. I used to be a uh, pretty avid VATSIM pilot and actually was on the VATSIM Board of Governors for a little while. So, uh, long history with VATSIM, hundreds of hours as a controller and pilot. Uh, pilot Edge has pretty much taken over VATSIM for me. I don't think I'm headed back anytime soon. And Caravan 6 right there, I forwarded your request. All right, thank you. Okay, so, got about 20 miles until we're going to start flying this approach. This hold is kind of interesting. I'm not sure if X-Plane is going to try and fly a hold there. Um, the chart doesn't actually show a hold prior to Halvey, so I'm a little bit <laughs> curious about uh, how that's going to work, but we'll figure it out one way or the other.
Yeah, my, my history with Vatsim was kind of long and interesting. I was in uh, the Seattle RTC as a controller instructor for several years. Uh, I was on the Vatsim Board of Governors as the Vice President of Web Services. I built stats.vatsim.net in its relatively current incarnation. I made the original VATAware back in 2007. Uh, kind of got my taste, my fill of all of the Vatsim politics and the VAT USA politics and the artsy level of politics. It was fun. I enjoyed flying. I enjoyed controlling uh, even a little bit more. ATC work is a lot of fun on VATSIM, but uh, you really can't beat Pilot Edge from the pilot perspective as a training tool, which is kind of my main motivation for flying these flights is to practice the art and science of navigation and generally become a better and more proficient pilot. Uh, pilot Edge is the way to go. Hey, Disgrace Pilot, good to see you. Scott 434 at Papa John Wayne Tower. One way 20 left at Kilo. Clear for takeoff. Welcome. So I've got a message on the GPS. Set course to 329. I don't know why it wants you to set the CRS knob to 329. It always pops that up. Maybe somebody knows why it cares about that. Yes, I agree. Better to figure out the GPS approach on a sunny day. You are correct, sir. Yeah, VataWare lives on as uh, the PE-aware site. The Pilot Edge version of VataWare um, is not too dissimilar from what VataWare used to be. Um, it works a lot better than VataWare did, honestly, because there's less traffic to deal with, so it holds up better, and that still I need to get replaced at some point as well, but there came a point with Vatterware where I was just kind of time trying, uh, <coughs> just, just time to be done with it. So Disgrace Pilot, I understand it wants me to line up the HSI, okay, I see, and trying to follow the, uh, trying to follow the needle, okay, so if I'm not locked in on the arrow, I see, I'd be chasing the arrow, okay, that makes sense, thanks for explaining that. Yeah, ZABCL, uh, definitely Peter Gray is our um, Director of Quality, Oper Quality Assurance and Operations. He's our controller supervisor. He'd be the person to do interviews for controllers. Uh, definitely talk to him. There's, uh, we always need good controllers for sure. Got about 12 miles till this uh, fix here. Hey, Jazan, good to see you. Well, got about ten miles here. Approach clearance. I'm interested to hear. Let me go call SoCal. Make sure he's still with us. SoCal Caravan 526 Victor, are you still with us? Caravan 526 Victor, I'll be uh, handing you off here in just a second. Okay, perfect. Just want to make sure we hadn't heard anything. Scott, Echo Papa, radar contact, contact departure. Flying in the mountains, doing an approach that I haven't done before, using a GPS I haven't used before. What could go wrong? What? Scott 434 Echo, uh, so can departure resume on navigation for updated part of two. Caravan 26 Victor, Tech Los Angeles Center 126.35. 126.35 for 5 to 6 Victor. Los Angeles uh, Center, Caravan 526 Victor, 1 1000. Caravan 526 Victor, Los Angeles Center. Uh, the Palm Springs altimeter 3025 advise you have the Big Bear weather? Uh, we have the weather for Big Bear uh, 526 Victor. Caravan 26 Victor, cross Okeko, at or above uh, 1 0000, cleared uh, RNAV, runway 26 approach. 
Okay, Okoko at a rev of one zero ten thousand, and we are cleared for the approach. Five two six Victor. All right, let's go ahead and descend now. So we don't have to worry about it. Travel back a little bit here. Okay. Explain GPS. What do you got for me? I'm interested to see how it's going to handle this. Uh, hold programmed. Dang it. Because uh, we don't want to hold, and there actually isn't a hold on the chart that I'm looking at at Okoko. So I'm a little curious as to where that came from and what it's going to have us do. But we'll figure it out. Um, I believe I have the LAX scenery that includes the other four airports. I don't know offhand. I haven't actually flown in the LA area for a little while, so I haven't checked scenery. I always do scenery right before I fly into an area, so uh, I think I'm using that one. Hotel Bravo, or I may have checked it out and decided I liked the John Wayne scenery that I had standalone better than the one that came in that four pack, so I might have uninstalled it. I think that might actually be what happened. I went to kill team with my clearance sequential request. Here comes their turn. Now this actually is interesting. This doesn't have the Bunja fix BNNGA in the is not listed in the uh, GPS approach. So somebody must have programmed this approach a little bit off. I'm just gonna leave it though. I thought whoops, I don't think it's something we need to worry about for the moment. But if I was flying this real world, you better believe I'd be concerned about that. Alright. Arriving waypoint. It is not beginning the turn, so I'm going to go ahead and... Oops. Shoot. Tell it to go direct to Javi. And start the approach. Scrace Pilot says he remembers an older version of the approach plate having a hold at Okoko. Ah, interesting. Yeah, that's one kind of unfortunate thing about uh, X-Plane. You're limited to the community's work in programming these things. People have to actually enter these approaches sort of by hand. There's not a good data source for this sort of thing, so it's kind of annoying. I'm actually going to put Minja in here. As fast as I can. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have Minja in the database. Well, that explains why it doesn't have it. Okay, well, this is going to get interesting. Um, on the chart, we're supposed to be at 9400 by but just we'll go ahead and descend to that right now. I did not expect to not have the right fix <laughs> in the database. That's something I'll have to go see if I can contribute that back to the community later, because that's gonna make this a little more. Seven zero six oh bravo. Uh, where are you at now? But I can see we are actually uh, the distance between Javi and Benja is four nautical miles. That's what this uh, is doing here. Six to uh, Bravo. We're so, uh, once we get four miles from Javi, we know we're at that Benja fix, and I can descend again to 8,700, so we'll do that. So I'm just going to watch this till it ticks down to 4.0. Initiate our descent. There it is. Now we can go to 8700. We'll fly 8700 to Zizuk. Citation 6 to Bravo. And then. Clip John Wayne Airport. I'm sorry, until Javi. The, uh, and then after Javi, we can direct descend. Direct Parker VOR, down direct to Palm Springs, about then as filed. Maintain flight level 280. Departure frequency 134.47.5767, all over release. These GPS approaches have very strange uh, names, because they're not designed to have to be read over the radio. So that's how, that's how we get... Uh, uh, citation, Total Bravo, hold your read <laughs> We're going to be getting a uh, frequency change here pretty soon. The Unicom for Big Bear is 122.7. Okay, right on 26 Vicar. Uh, no traffic observed between yourself and the airport. Change to advisory is, is approved for uh, IFR cancellation for missed approach this frequency. Okay, we'll report missed or IFR cancellation this frequency and frequency change approved. Thanks, 526 Victor. 
Station 5 wind. Big Bear traffic, uh, Caravan 526 Victor, about 5 miles out on the GPS, uh, 26 approach, Big Bear. Okay, about to Javi, we're just leveling off here at 8700. Let's get our prop forward. Get our lights on for landing. And after Javi, we'll program a descent down to 8200. Hey, Jungle Curry 911, thanks for the follow, appreciate it, hope you're enjoying the stream. Okay, two, one, zero, all right, down to 8200. So this is the final descent um, on the approach. We cannot descend any lower than this. So we did not already have the airport in sight, which as you can see, we clearly do, it's right there. Uh, we would have to fly this altitude over the airport and execute the missed approach. In this case, we have the airport clearly in sight. So we will go ahead and descend. And pretty shortly here, I'll turn off the autopilot and fly in the rest of the way. Flaps down. Yeah, I haven't upgraded to X Plane 10.32 yet. I've heard a couple people, other people having similar complaints about it, so I kind of like my sim to be, you know, working. So, I don't know, that's just me. Alright, autopilot coming off. Get a little more flaps. Take a quick peek. Looks like we're reasonably lined up. Got a little displaced threshold there to worry about. This is a 5,000 foot runway, and we're in a caravan, so I'm not exactly worried about running in a runway, but... And this is the nice, pretty approach that I promised you guys. Got a nice little lake, some scary mountains there that we don't we don't have to deal with if we go around good times all right i'm super high we gotta dive a little bit here super duper duper high all right lights are on flaps are at 20 gears down and welded Caravan 526 Victor, uh, correction, Big Bear traffic, Caravan 526 Victor on a three mile final for runway 26, Big Bear. Bring my fishing rod, says Pitbull. See, he thinks I'm going to run out of runway and go into the lake. That's not very nice. Well, you can see why this displaced threshold is here. There's trees, like, <laughs> right next to the runway. That's kind of rude. Although, I guess it makes sense. You want to have as much runway to get out of here as you can because of the high altitude. So, I suppose that's reasonable. We can let him have that one. Oh, to chill out after. Okay, all right, all right. All right, I'll back off. All right, we're still pretty... Might have clipped a tree there. Go ahead and let this settle in. Don't stall. Yeah, I'll bump it a little bit, but not too bad. Alright, get on the brakes here. Flaps in, clean up the airplane. So we need to switch back to Los Angeles Center on 2635 of the controller we were just talking to and let him know we're down safe and canceling IFR. Actually, I should do the traffic call first to get off the air, off the uh, runway. Big Bear traffic, Caravan 526 Victor, just clear of 26 on Echo. We're gonna be taxiing to parking on Alpha Big Bear. All right, now we can call Los Angeles. Taxi, we just help taxi with. Los Angeles Center, Caravan 526 Victor, we're on the ground safely. Closing IFR, please. Caravan 6 Victor, IFR cancellation received. Uh, have a good night. You too, thanks for the help, 526 Victor. 
All right, well, because I got la yelled at last time because I didn't turn the power off before I turned the mixture off, today I will turn the avionics off, then the battery off, then all the lights, and now I will pull the mixture back and turn off the engine. There you have it, folks. It's another successful flight. May well have hit a tree on the way down, but, you know, we, uh, we got her done. So... I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure exactly yet when my next stream is going to be. Probably not until um, midweek of next week, but I might pop up on the weekend. Um, for those of you that followed during the flight, I appreciate it. Um, if you turn on notifications, you can get notified next time I uh, fly. Yeah, I don't worry about parking the planes, Jasmine. That's somebody else's job to tow me into place. I'm a big shot pilot. I'm not here to park. So you can just deal with it. Um, thanks, f thanks for joining me. I uh, hope to see you all again soon, and thanks for the company. See you soon.